ओके आई विल स्टार्ट माई क्लास तो इफ यू इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ आई एम डॉक्टर अर्णव गांगुली आई एम द टीचर्स काउंसिल सेक्रेटरी ऑफ दिस कॉलेज एंड आई एम ऑल्सो अ फैकल्टी मेम्बर ऑफ दिस डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जुओलॉजी आई विल बी टेकिंग योर माइनर क्लासेस सो माइनर एंड मेजर आर गॉट इक्वल वेटेज If you think you are uh, from honors and all these things, then everything has been changed according to the uh, new educational policy. So this year you have one major and one minor. Both have got equal weightage, a five credit seat. So you have to treat this as unlike another major subject which you are studying in the department of zoology, in a different department other than yours. Okay, so I will start. Your syllabus is same along with the major students. So today I will start. The first uh, part is the same syllabus. The first thing which I will uh, talk about is about taxonomy. Before I explain, uh, I'll give you the definition of what taxonomy is. Before I tell you what is the definition of taxonomy. I will uh, talk about a uh, thing known as biological classification. I will talk about what is biological classification. Zoologists call this as zoological classification. Botanists call them as botanical class. Botan. बॉटेनिकल क्लासिफिकेशन सिंपल जोलॉजिस्ट स्टडी द विटेकर सिस्टम ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन बॉटेनिस्ट स्टडी द बेंथम हुक सिस्टम ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन इट इट बेसिकली द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बिटवीन बॉटनी एंड जुओलॉजी बट यू डोंट हैव टू बॉदर यूर सेल्फ अबाउट इट थिंक अबाउट बायोलॉजिकल क्लासिफिकेशन एंड बी आई थिंक आई एम जुओलॉजिस्ट आई बी टॉकिंग इट इन टर्म्स ऑफ जुओलॉजिकल क्लासिफिकेशन सो आई बी टॉकिंग अबाउट जुओलॉजिकल क्लासिफिकेशन That is classification of animals. So, as per the zoologist, there is a five kingdom classification. Five kingdom classification. And what are the five kingdom classification? They are the first are the monerans. Second are the protist, protista. The third are the fungi, the fourth are the plantae, and the fifth are the animalia. This is the classification of R. H. Whitaker in 1969. So these are the five things, and he, among this, number three, four, five, they are multicellular organisms. And these are unicellular. Monerans are proto prokaryotes, and protistan eukaryotes. So all of them are eukaryotes. Monet, uh, the protozoa, protist, uh, pro prokaryotes are the bacteria. Okay. Now, uh, or this is just the classification. Now, why do you need to classify animals? What is the reason for classifying animals? And what is classification? So, biological classification or zoological classification. That is the process by which organisms. 
you can call or animals or plants or whatever organisms place in same group on the basis of similarity in characters so taking account uh, account of similar characters for example mammals we are all mammals that tiger is a mammal that deer is a mammal that zebra is a mammal right let's see it so charo dikhao dekho to mammal hi dikhega bhi ha so uh, you are you are looking at mammals everywhere so what are mammals mammals they have got mammary glands they have got hair all over the body right you know these there are other there are hundreds of characters of mammals they have got a diaphragm they are red blood cells they don't have nucleus so whatever uh, be the characteristics of uh, mammals so moment you see an animal which has got a mammary gland and hair over the body you will immediately put them in the group mammalian mammals next let us look up a bit higher okay you see some insects have made that upar dekhne se thoda sa alag dikhta hai mammal nahi dikh raha you see some insects have made all that right we poka termite they are black insects so they don't have hair on their body so they are dissimilar characters so we place them in a different group so first is place them so for similar characters jo hai hair on the body and mammary glands you may have you place them other mammals and then place in different group place in different group on the basis of this similar characters so this is the essence of biological classification so just classifying them the same is just not enough both haphazard it's very haphazard so today we are calling in english mammals in bengali we are calling son of a wild prani in hindi we are calling something else in german we are calling something else so people will not understand whenever you call somebody who has not studied english at all if you try to call them they are asking about mammals you have not heard about it they are talking about the tarao mammals from the sunen okay so uh, that is not enough for that you need to study the science of classifying organism in a very scientific manner it will be given here so the first thing in taxonomy is you will call them science of science of classifying organisms you will call taxonomy as the science of classifying organism we classify organism on the basis of their similarities and dissimilarities and now what is the science of classifying that organism can anybody say what is the science oh, anyway i'll talk about it so the in this science of classifying organism what you do the first thing you, you do is on taxonomy you provide a scientific name you 
you provide a scientific name to that organism and this is uh, in latin it's the basically it's known as the binomial nomenclature it's called the binomial nomenclature and that what is this binomial nomenclature i am or you are homo sapiens you must write it like this underline it and the s must start with a small letter and you have to underline it homo sapiens this is known as the genus name and this is the species name this is a latinized this is latinized okay it is nice to uh, uh, you use it in latin so people all over the world whenever you talk about well, whenever the name homo sapiens come they exactly know uh which organism they are talking about which group of organism they are talking about similarly canis familiaris dog whenever uh, a person in india says canis familiaris a person in germany also says canis familiaris both of them will know they are talking about the same uh, thing here you will call them kukur and uh, uh, there they may call them hund they are talking about the same organisms but uh, they will not be able to understand so to have a uniform nomenclature you have this particular system done right homo sapiens this to provide a scientific name and the first thing about it is, is providing a scientific name the second thing taxonomy does is describes that organism so immediately when you see uh, describe a homo sapiens erect posture standing on two legs tall neck increased brain capacity all these things features opposing fingers and uh, thumb and fingers uh, thumb and uh, pointers thumb and your pointers they are opposing right so these these this is these are characteristics of homo sapiens and primates so immediately you get this uh, characteristic and uh, uh, you describe them so all the features of homo sapiens you list the uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 so they do this in taxonomy you study this okay after description you have to preserve collections of them preserve collection of them if you go to that room you will see in the museum you will see several of these rat stored in little containers so you are, in if you go to any museum animal museum zoological museum you will find them they have to, these collections are preserved right so you have to preserve collections of them as a whichever possible for protozoans for a single you cannot preserve them in formally you make a slide and then you paste that and you preserve the slide so you can see under the microscope the deep part is you have to provide classification for the organism so what is providing classification for organism you have to put phylum you have to what was the phylum what comes from your 1112 phylum is all right yes ha eh? 
ক্লাসের তলায় অর্ডারের তলায় হ্যাঁ ফ্যামিলি ফ্যামিলি তলায় ট্যাক্সোনমিক র্যাঙ্ক rank and each step each of this level it is known as a taxa a taxon singular taxon this is another taxon another taxon another taxon taxon now whenever you classify your uh, you are starting to classify an organism First, you have to give them this seven uh, seven rank classification. Then, within that group, for example, say for example, you have come to genus. We are talking about dogs. You have to add kingdom animalia, phylum, chordata, uh, uh, class. You have come to mammalia, uh, order. What order? Carnivora. Then you have family. You have come to canidae. then you have come to genus canis now after this uh, uh, canis you come to the species uh, family of for human beings it uh, goes the same way you come to the family of homonidae the genus homo species sapiens but then if you look at the 5000 years history there was another uh, homo sapiens living So the Neanderthal man, Homo sapiens Neanderthal, and the yes, Homo sapiens Neanderthal is they died out, they don't exist. But there was uh, uh, interbreeding among the Neanderthal man and the sapiens, the normal Cro-Magnon man like us. There was breeding among them, but still they had the facial features were different. They were they given a subspecies standard. So later you are actually within that group of. Homo sapiens. You have seen that some Homo sapiens are very different than others. Currently, we have only Homo sapiens sapiens, irrespective of skin color. You can mate with any of the Homo sapiens, and you will have children. Similarly, any whether it be an African or American or European or South American or any native tribe, pygmies, whatever be. Still, yeah, there there will be no problem in having children. So, uh, but uh, say for example, if uh, in human there nobody is uh, living nowadays, any other subspecies, for example. But in Drosophila, yes, Drosophila simulans and Drosophila melanogaster, so they look the exactly the same. But breeding among them is very difficult. They have sterile offspring. If 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 you force them to breed, they have sterile offspring. If you be a, uh, breed a uh, male horse and a female, uh, uh, male donkey and a female horse, you have a mule. Mules are sterile because they have become a different species. The genus equus of horses, they have the donkeys are different and horses are different, different species. So they cannot mate uh, among themselves and have proper children, normal children. They won't have it. so then you can actually just uh, start to break them into kingdom sub kingdom phylum sub phylum class sub class order sub order family sub family genus sub genus then you are talking sub genus i have not heard about sub genus but then species sub species are heard even after you have given sub kingdom sub kingdom after that on top of that you want to make another classification you can use intra kingdom then within this infra kingdom you can have two sub kingdom that is done later but first you have to do with this seven uh, seven class the seven rank taxonomic classification so this, these are the taxonomic ranks so in taxonomy you 
provide classification for these organisms. So you do these step step, and each step is known as step step. You do this classification. Not only that, you have to give them keys to identification. Now, what are these keys to identification? The keys to identification the includes why kingdom, why this phylum, why this class, why this order, why this family, why this genus, why this species. Why kingdom animalia? You have to give the characteristics of animals. Why kingdom? Why phylum chordata? You have to give the characteristics of chordata. Why class? You have to give the characteristics of that particular class. So this is how uh, yeah, this is how you make a key. You have to give this a uh, the key okay, to uh, identification. Why this? Does it have this particular character? Yes. Then it is phylum this. Does it have this particular character? No, it does not. Then it is this phylum. So it's like this. You have to make a key. You start like this. Does it have this? Yes. Then you go to this step. No. You go to this step. Okay. Then if it is yes, does it have this? Then you go to this step. If no, you go to this step. Does it have a notochord? Yes. Then it's phylum chordata. No. It is a, a non-chordate. Later. But you have to provide this is known as C2 identification. Uh, you have got certain characters. Does it have this character? Yes, then it is yes. If no, then it's something else. Okay. Then, then after that, you also have to give data on their distribution. You have to give data on their distribution. That is where are they located. For example, canaries are distributed in Australia, nowhere else in the world. Okay, something like this. They have to give. Snow leopards on the mountains and snowy regions. Yeah, the, this all all these things are part of taxonomy, but. In modern uh, modern uh, uh, study of classification, this is not sufficient. So a new branch has developed, and that is known as systematic. A new branch has developed, and that is known as systematic. What they do in systematic, you study all these four points. Plus, you have to study other things. You have to study their evolutionary history. You have to study their evolutionary history. Homo sapiens, sapiens. Then you see Homo sapiens. Uh, before that, Homo habilis, Homo erectus. Uh, uh, sorry, Homo erectus, Homo habilis. Pythacanthropus, Australopithecus. So if you, they are not existing, but if you look at the fossil records, you are going to find that you have to study their evolutionary history. Kiste kona ya, kaste ke kaste. From which organism has evolved from which one? So you need a fossil record. So this is also studied in systematics, not in taxonomy, but in systematics this is needed. And another thing which is uh, studied. is evolutionary adaptation you study evolutionary adaptation hey environmental adaptation sorry about this mistake whether they are adapted to life on land whether they are adapted to life under water whether they are adapted to life uh, uh, in the air, whether they are adapted to life on the trees, 
there are different types of adaptations arboreal cursorial fossorial lot of lala lala uh, adaptations are present uh, so uh, the, we don't study about adaptation but in systematic we have to study this so taxonomy is these four points and systematic these four points plus these two so nowadays we do systematic not taxonomy in modern textbooks you will find systematic not taxonomy in former times before all these things developed we used to study all these things the next thing which we may go are what are taxonomic characters what are taxonomic characters now what do you mean by taxonomic characters they are those characters on the basis of which you classify organisms what characters do you see that you will say that what character will you see in yourself that you will say that you are human what character will you uh, look at if you say that uh, that is a dog these are taxonomic characters so they are essentially the main kinds of uh, taxonomical characters are first is the morphological characters बाहर से के देखे जा बोझा जाए इतना मॉर्फोलॉजी कि लुक अपरेंटली फ्रॉम योर ऑन एक्सटर्नल कैरेक्टर्स विच आर देयर कुलिया देख के पता चल जो कैरेक्टर्स मिलता है दैट इज मॉर्फोलॉजिकल कैरेक्टर इफ यू लुक एट द शेप ऑफ द फेस एंड ऑफ अ ह्यूमन बीइंग यू नो दैट अ ह्यूमन बीइंग एट अ मॉर्फोलॉजिकल कैरेक्टर देन यू हैव एनाटॉमिकल कैरेक्टर Anatomy means you have to cut it open. If you cut that organism open inside, what you will find? If you cut a human being, you will find a diaphragm. So you can say, okay, diaphragm is the mammal. Reptiles don't have diaphragm. Right? Then the third character is. Ecological character. What are ecological characters? Are on the basis of their habitat. Polar bears live in the North Pole, South Pole, and the normal grizzly bears or the mountain bears. they are living uh, in the mainland not in the pole but in the equator in the in the temperate region something like that ecological character the next character which i sort of like are ethological character ecological character or behavioral character special example i will give you about rhopsophila <laughs> melanogaster and rhopsophila simulan they are two different species of rhopsophila rhopsophila is the common fruit fly right so whenever you see a banana or an apple you will see small little flies coming and sitting that is rhopsophila immediately after some within one or two minutes you will see a red fly coming in there are two red, red eyes and that is rhopsophila 
and on this Drosophila, all modern science is based on this word, Drosophila, work done on Drosophila. Started with the work of T.H. Morgan. So, the, in both the, when this Drosophila mate, when male and female may mate, they have a specific, the male show a specific courtship pattern. He could have selected a metaka line must say, They have got a special dance. The males have a special dance so that the females can understand that that male wants to mate with me. Busta pare. Amader male the rati ke guitar baje ni dikhe dang dang kore gaye. Ero ko onik kisi hoye the. Chai mast ke onik kisi koshte. Lege lagya to achha nahi laga to gaya. Ha, so they have a special pattern. They have a special pattern of uh, this dance. The male part lifts its wing in this direction, then in this direction, then this direction, then goes behind the female. Then the female understands that that male wants to mate with me. This is what happens in Rosophila Melanogaster. In simulants, the dance is different. They, they do it in a different pattern. So when the simulant male wants to mate with the Melanogaster female, it does a simulant male dance. The simulant female is unable to understand that it wants to mate. So meeting will not occur. So immediately, it is uh, they are placed under two separate species. This is a character. This behavior is a character. This behavior is a character. We have also several inbuilt behavior also among ourselves. Whenever we see a baby, hmm? so we do this eyebrow bow. Uh, we, we just do this like this. Hmm? First, first thing we do to a baby is like this. Whenever we see, this is a natural. This is genetically programmed inside ourselves. Even if you don't want to, it is going to happen. This is, this is a genetic adaptation. The baby gets entertained or interested then. Some movements. Baby, babies actually look at movements around. So this movement is something a baby is also programmed to understand that that person is giving you attention. So uh, there are several other things which uh, human beings do, which are genetically programmed. Everybody rebels. There are lots. Let's not, that's a different issue in animal behavior. But behavior, this is an ethological character which you are talking about. Then, you have geographical characters. You know, uh, uh, kangaroos are in Australia. So they are marsupials, they, they are different. So uh, based on their geography, you can uh, also the it's a geographical character. Then comes the important certain important characters. Biochemical characters. In higher vertebrates, or rather in cortex, uh, normally the uh, uh, the main uh, energy which we use is creatine, phosphocreatine, acetylene. But it is a different compound in lower vertebrates, invertebrates, phosphoguanine. So all these things, uh, the, these are the biochemical compounds. From this basis of biochemistry inside, the compounds present in a particular thing, you can distinguish it also. And then most important nowadays is the genetic character. Biochemical, you can also call it uh, as also physiological character. Genetic character. Or psychological characters, you can call them. Now, here you study chromosome numbers. We have 46 chromosomes. Horses have a different number of chromosomes. Drosophila has five chromosomes. So, on the basis of this, the horse, uh, horse and zebra, uh, horse and donkey, they have just uh, 40 uh, one chromosome less in hot and zebra the one chromosome more so that's a different character 
Yes. So these are taxonomic characters. So we stop today. We will do, uh, take the class, continue the class next day. Okay.